What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the Boston Clinic and more. We was going to do a live stream, but, um, you know, God willing, we get into it tomorrow. Um, Could have did tonight. Just chose to do it uh, tomorrow. Uh think my day might have opened up. So, um, in between NFL games, between the night, the afternoon night game, I'll jump on, do a nice little lengthy uh, live stream. But, um, you know, after the fight, you know, uh, Lomachenko was uh, answering questions. And asked who you want to fight next. He said Mikey Garcia. You know, feeling like the boss. You feeling like LeBron, like he the king of New York. And um, I think fighting on ESPN is starting to make things happen for Lomachenko. I think they may want to scrap that world tour, tour they talking about going on. Moving him up uh, to 135 lightweight and putting him on like a little world or European tour or whatever. Which would be smart, but I think his stock is starting to rise now after the night. Um, they built this fight up, fight up pretty nicely. It ain't the best built up fight I've seen, but it was a fight that sold itself. And we know Riggin Dow quitting. It'll be a video coming later on today on that, exclusively on him quitting. Um, but you know, they asked him about Gary Russell before we get to Mikey Garcia. He says he just talking. He don't really want to fight. He just on the camera talking. And uh, maybe that's, I, I gotta agree with him on that. You know, Russell said I'll chase him to whatever weight class he go to until he give me my rematch. But at the end of the day, Gary Russell, he ain't active. You know, he fight once a year. He ain't active. May it be with his hands. You know, he's got a hand injury. You got to be active to even, you know, uh, fight Lomachenko and get that rematch. He said, you know, the promotional companies might be in the way. But he, he don't think Gary Russell want that smoke. Um, and I got to agree until he started getting active. Lee Selby did um, definitely give him a vote of confidence saying that uh, Gary Russell was the best of the rest at, at 126. And uh, I, I think that's that's facts. That's factual. You know, he Gary Russell was the king of 126. That's why nobody wants to fight him. But at the end of the day, he does himself no favors and and not stay active. You know, I think Lomachenko, it'll, it'll turn out pretty much the same way. I heard his little scale story about how that scale was off for the whole camp and he was drained and stuff. And that could be that could be true. He didn't quit like the like Walters or, or, or Rigondeaux. You know, even if he truly was drained in malnutrition, Gary Russell fought through that. You know, but Gary Russell is, is from a tough place, you know, where they build tough people in the East Coast, down in Maryland, D.C. area. They don't build quitters down there, you know. You go East Coast, you know, Philly, New York, down the border, D.C., you know, they don't they don't build quitters for the most part. But there's always exceptions to the rule. But he fought and he competed. He didn't get watched by Lomachenko. You know, that was a good competitive fight. I think Lomachenko won about three or four rounds, maybe a little bit more. But it was competitive. You know, Russell was competitive, but Lomachenko just adjusted and pulled away towards the end of the fight. But, um, you know, him and Mikey Garcia will be an excellent fight. That's a fight that I can't call off the top of my dome and won't attempt to. So the haters that have something to hold on to, well, you said December 10th, Sunday, da 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 You know what I'm saying? So I don't know who I picked. Um, I, I, this fight was talked about earlier this year or late last year. My boy Antonio, shout out to boy Antonio in the championship boxing group uh, championship rounds on Facebook. We talked about this fight, and he was like, you going back and forth, pick one. I said, man, I can't pick, man, because y'all know I rock with Mikey, and I was telling y'all what, what Mikey was going to do to Adrian Broner right when that fight was rumored and then when it was announced. And that was another instance where you guys just didn't believe me. You know, y'all a lot of guys was riding the Adrian Broner bandwagon and saying, oh, Mikey too small. You know, Mikey ain't never fought nobody like Adrian Broner. Mikey this, Mikey that. And I'm telling you, I was like, Mikey gonna whoop him, man. You know, you know, he used to spar with Madonna, you know, Brandon Rios, you know, a host of guys, the Lorme. I mean, you know, he he got some premier sparring and that's where the jump in competition kinda of, the jump in competition kind of happened for him because he was uh, stagnant because of the top rank uh, beef. But he was getting top sparring from, you know, guys that competed with and almost beat Floyd Mayweather and Madonna. With guys that's as talented like Thomas DeLorme that didn't have no jaw, but he had the headgear and the bigger gloves on that made it harder. Guys that's physically big and can get, can get you on the inside, get you ready for the inside, and the big punches like Brandon Rios. I mean... You know, go smaller with Abner Mares. You know, he he had the he had the best sparring um, to get him to keep him ready and take his game to the next level when he chose to come back and jump up to 135. And people just couldn't fathom and understand what I was saying because I followed them closely. I followed that that camp closely because Ellie's always there, and I'm a big fan of ES News and Ellie Segbert videos. And I said, and I was, I just had always followed Mikey, and I knew that 135 wasn't gonna be an issue, and fighting Broner at 140 wouldn't be an issue. 
And I know, I understand that somebody said him and Lomachenko spar. I don't care about that. Um, I remember Lomachenko was saying some things to Zach Pitcher. And Mikey Garcia popped up at ESPN and put his hand on his shoulder like that. And Lomachenko was kind of surprised. Um, quietly, they, they are, they are, both camps are friendly. But, um, you know, with some little beef there, some things said back and forth a couple months ago. And, um, and I think Lomachenko wants to challenge a fight with Mikey Garcia. The biggest hurdle is, you know, Mikey and Bob Arum and Al Heyman making that fight happen. Um, for Lomachenko, should he get a nice little tune-up fight? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, maybe a Jorge Linares would be a good fight for him uh, if he can get there. But um, in my opinion, um, I think it's two guys that can give him trouble at 35. You know, um, I think it's Robert Richard Jr. with a little bit more polishedness on him, the size and height. He can erase Lomachenko's uh, angles. And I stand by what I said, said earlier, saying that Lomachenko is not a great fighter, offensive fighter. He's, he's overrated offensively. Um, and his defense is, is everything, you know. His angles and his defense sets up everything else. Without his defense, he's a he's nothing, you know. Um, but I'm not saying he has zero offensive repertoire. I'm just saying it's overrated. He's not a good offensive fighter. He pity pass with his punches. He tries to create angles. And he's able to get away with that versus, you know, guys the equal size or smaller size than with him. We've seen that tonight. With bigger guys, those angles and be able to jump inside, outside, they won't be there because they reach a Robert Jr. Jr. be able to touch him. Well, I think he beat Robert Jr. Absolutely. Right now, he dog walk him. I'm just saying it would be a challenge and to be nice to see how he deal with that height. Same as for Mikey. I mean, I'm here Omar Figueroa, here Robert Gar Robert or Easter. I don't know. That'd be interesting to see how Mikey uh, deals with it, but, but potentially them matching up. Um, you know, it'll be about Mikey um, erasing those angles. You know, that's what it would be about. Um, you know, Big G and his brother Mikey. I mean, his brother uh, Robert Garcia. Uh, they have them ready, man. I think they understand how they would like to approach and fight Lomachenko. Um, it would be truly, what Triple G says, big drama show, Mexican style. Um, it would be him having to cut the ring off, you know, working the body exclusively early and bringing that Salido type, you know, pressure. And Mikey can fight like that. Even though Mikey is a, you know, he got that, that black American fighter style with boxing, but Mikey has the Mexican style as well. And the body punching, and he can do some. He can create a game plan around what Salido did in a first fight, but it'd be a difficult fight for me to call because Lomachenko was just the shit. And I, and I, I my eyes open to that in the loss with Orlando, Orlando Salido. You know, when he lost, um, I usually don't do more victories, and I still don't. But I said, man, he got everything that you get in the first fifteen or twenty fights before you're ready to become a world champion in one fight. That experience that Salido gave him is invaluable. And he's in debt to Salido for giving him that experience. Because in that fight, he learned that he had to plan more and become more a better offensive fighter. He was a shitty offensive fighter then, you know, for the most part. It was amateurish. Now, he from the Salido fight, he's generating more power. He's sitting down on his punches. And if he chose to move up and then had a Salido fight with that offensive style, I would surely pick Mikey Garcia 100% before the Salido fight. But offensively, he is improving now. But he's going to have to sit down on more punches than he's been doing the last two fights. You know, like he did with the Walters, he's going to have to sit down on more punches if he's going to move up and be effective at 35 and potentially 40. But him and, him and Mikey is a fight that I would have to watch film on weeks to determine the winner. But who would y'all like, Mikey or Lomachenko, on the 